On day one, I spawned in as Distorted Alex. Ah, oh, only four hearts? I should stay out of trouble with health like that, especially since I'm Distorted Alex, creepypasta legend, and enemy to players and villagers everywhere. Luckily, I had the power to turn invisible. Now you see me, now you don't. Time to scare some villagers. But hey, where is everyone? I started sneaking around the village, but it looks like all the villagers are gone, except for one. Hello? Wait a second, that's not a villager, that's an illager, and it looks like it wants to get me. I turned invisible and ran inside a nearby house. I turned around and saw that I wasn't alone in there though. There was a hungry wolf with me. He must be able to smell me, even though I'm invisible. I tried to escape, but the wolf kept following me. I ran out of the house and looked for another one to hide in. I found one, but there wasn't a door. Luckily, there was a chest at the top and I managed to block the entrance with a wooden block. I'm gonna stay inside this house until morning so the illager and the dog won't find me. Maybe I'll be able to find out what happened to the other villagers tomorrow, since what good is it being distorted Alex if I can't sneak up on people? On day two, I opened a treasure chest inside the house and found some cobblestone and wood, which I used to make a shovel and an axe. I was ready to use the axe on the wolf, but after I had removed the wood blocking the entrance, I could see that the wolf was gone. It looked like there was also a basement level to this house, so I went down. Oh no, is that another wolf? Luckily, it wasn't a wolf this time, it was a friendly dog. You're not my master. No, I'm not. But what happened to your village? It doesn't look like anyone is here anymore. Those illagers took all the villagers away a few days ago. They had wolves with them too, and I had to hide down here to get away from them. Where did they take them? Over the hills, to the north of here. You look scary, but would you be willing to help me, please? Please rescue my master. I know that I was supposed to be distorted Alex, but how can you say no to a puppy dog? Looks like they needed a hero, even one that looks like a creepy version of Alex. Okay, I'll do my best. I looked around the basement and found an iron sword hanging on the wall. Finally, a weapon! Just then, I noticed I was feeling pretty hungry. I took a look inside the sacks and barrels, but they were all empty. The dog sniffed around and pointed to a barrel. I took a look inside and found some baked potatoes, among a bunch of other food. I could tell the dog was hungry too, so I tossed some food out to him. Ugh, I don't eat this. I need some bones or meat. Ah uh, yeah, that's a good point. Don't worry, we'll find something for you soon. On day three, I decided to dig a cave beneath the basement to see if I can find any more materials down there. But to do that, I needed to craft a pickaxe. I put out the fire, then got to work crafting a pickaxe. I'll even give one to the dog so he can help me mine. We dug a little too far though and got attacked by a lurker. Get to safety, dog. I'll handle this. I turned invisible and snuck up on the lurker, using my sword to bring it down. Looks like defeating that mob brought me up to six hearts. Awesome! This cave isn't actually all that dangerous. I think I'll make it my underground base. On days four to five, I went outside and noticed that after my level up, I can also warp short distances. Awesome! I started gathering wood from the surrounding trees. I used my warp a few times to get up the tree and reach all the logs, and even to cross a river and a ravine. I started heading back, but oh no, it's that illager again. He must be patrolling the area around the village. I warped out of sight and turned invisible so I could listen to him talking without being detected. Thought I saw another pathetic villager to capture and bring to the redstone mines, but I guess not. So it is true, the illagers were the ones who took everyone away. I guess it figures that all of them didn't just leave on their own, but now how am I supposed to live up to my legend? I'm supposed to be the one who makes all the villagers run away from the village. They're supposed to be scared of me, not these lamos. I couldn't let them take any more people. He was no match for me now that I was stronger. I was able to hit him hard and take him out quickly. On day six to eight, I first improved my base in the cave. After that, I mined so much stone from the underground that I could craft a suit of stone armor to protect me. But first, I needed to craft the cobblestone into cobblestone nuggets, which I smelt into cobblestone ingots, and then crafted those into the armor. I dug down even deeper into the mine and took on some cave spiders. Take that! You spiders think you can be scarier than me? I'm Distorted Alex, the best creepypasta around. My armor and sword were both really great, but when three cave spiders with poison take you down to half a heart, it's no fun. I looked around, but could only find coal, so I grabbed some. This place is scary though, and I swear I hear some creepy sounds. I'm going invisible. Oh, right, when I'm invisible, I need to take my armor off. Now let's get out of here, don't want to risk getting hurt. On days 9 to 10, I went to the nearby hills in order to search for those redstone mines that I had heard the illager talking about. All the real villagers, including the dog's human, were probably there right now, and they needed my help. Of course, they don't know that I'm creepypasta yet, but we'll cross that scary bridge over a scary river when we get to it. 
For now, it was time to find out what I was up against. I showed up to an area where a lot of redstone was being hauled out of a cave in a minecart. This must be the place. There's also this huge green guy with a giant sword. <laughs> All the redstone will belong to me, the Great Crushmore. He was no joke. I better not mess with him. Good thing I could sneak inside the mine with my invisibility. Maybe I'll be able to scare Crushmore later, once I level up more. Just as I suspected, a bunch of villagers were being forced to mine redstone nonstop. I like redstone as much as the next player, but there are limits, man. Haven't you ever heard of the phrase, mine your own business? Whoa, Crushmore even captured a shopkeeper. I decided to reveal myself to the shopkeeper. Hello, Mr. Shopkeeper. My name is Zozo, and I'm looking for the owner of a nice dog. My dog is okay? Thank goodness. He's waiting for you back at the village. Come with me. I can sneak us out of here. I'll only go if you agree to help the rest of the villagers. Crushmore is making us mine every day without any breaks. He needs to be stopped. Deal. What else could I say? We started to sneak out of the cave, but he spotted us. Ah, let's get out of here. On days 11 to 12, I fixed up the house so that the shopkeeper could move back in with his dog. He gave me some health potions and agreed to let me keep expanding the basement as long as I defeated any mobs that came in. I found a troll in the mine and my iron sword couldn't do anything to it. It just kept healing. I had to drink one of my health potions. What are trolls weak against anyway? Maybe I need something that damages quicker than it can heal. Fire could do the job. I gathered more wood and crafted some torches. Then I noticed I had no armor equipped. The next time I see the troll, I'll be able to light it up. Ha! Sick burn. And I'll make sure to wear some armor this time too. I went back to the troll and used the torch to light him on fire. Looks like fire attacks are super effective. I should stock up on flint and steel as well. That way I can use fire whenever I need to. Distorted Alex can burn down buildings, right? I guess I might as well embrace it. I started to find iron and other metals in the mine, so soon I'd be able to craft steel and upgrade my armor. I crafted an iron chest plate, iron boots, iron shovel, and iron pickaxe, and had to go grab one last piece of iron for the flint and steel. It'd be nice to get a new weapon, too. On days 13 to 15, I was at the base when the shopkeeper decided to tell me what happened when the villagers were taken away. We were always worried about Crushmore. For a long time, he made us give him all the redstone we had, or else. Some of our people didn't want to give up their own redstone, so they became outcasts from us. Those were the illagers. We never could have imagined that they'd team up with Crushmore and bully us into doing their dirty work. Now everyone is trapped in those redstone mines, and the village will be empty until somebody does something about it. How terrible. Won't you do something, Zozo? I thought about it, and then I gave my answer. The truth is, I'm an outcast myself. I'm not saying what the illagers did was right, but I totally understand not wanting to give away their materials. You're all scared of Crushmore, and so am I. Sorry, but there's nothing I can do. It felt really weird to admit that I was scared, but I had never seen a boss as strong as Crushmore. He was probably close to 100 times as scary as me, and I was supposed to be the creepypasta character around here. That doesn't seem right. The shopkeeper and his dog were saddened by this, but what I had said was the truth. On days 16 to 19, I left the empty village and left my base behind to go find the materials to make a better weapon in the mountains. Crushmore would come looking for the shopkeeper and his dog eventually, and with all the illagers he already had on his side, he'd be totally unstoppable. I saw some light at the top of the mountain. That's the way! I climbed up the snowy mountain slopes, but at some point it got too steep. It looked like my only option was to swim up a small waterfall. Oh man, this is f freezing! I soon made it to the top, but there were more trolls here. It was time to put that flint and steel to good use. I made several fires, which scared them off. Then I found an ice cave, but it was guarded by more trolls. No worries, I got this. I set part of the cave on fire, and the trolls fled. At the back of the cave, on a stone pedestal, I found a frosted sword with sharpness 3. It was made of enchanted ice that was 10 times as strong as normal. I started to think about the way I had left things with the shopkeeper and his dog, and realized that I had been a little rude. I mean, just because distorted Alex doesn't usually help people in need doesn't mean I should ever do it. Sometimes you gotta be the hero, even if it goes against what you had planned. That's just the right thing to do. Besides, I already promised I would help save the other villagers from the redstone mine, and a promise is a promise. I began to make my way back down the mountain when I saw a llama struggling near the edge of the cliff. Help me, please! I'm gonna fall! I ran over and offered the llama a hand. No way am I going to let an innocent creature get hurt. 
It was almost too late, and she started to fall. But I warped again and caught the llama in midair, then I warped back onto solid ground. Whoa, I had never warped that many times in a row before. Then I noticed that my powers of warping and distorting myself were causing me to grow. I was bigger now, and I also had 10 hearts. I'm getting scarier every day. I can't wait to see what I look like at even higher levels. Thank you for saving me, new friend. My name is Becca. What were you doing out here, Becca? I heard that the villagers in this area were being oppressed by an evil brute named Crushmore. So I'm searching for a powerful golem that might be able to defeat him. Why would a llama be so concerned about human villagers? Hey, just because we're different doesn't mean I have to stay out of it. I want to help everyone. Hard to argue with that logic. Now that I had thought about it, I realized my reason for why I've been helping out is kind of the same as her. I guess Becca isn't too different from me. Well, other than me being a creepypasta and her being a talking llama, but otherwise, we're basically the same. Legend has it that the golem is hidden somewhere near these mountains, waiting for a hero with pure intentions to awaken it. I don't know if I'm that hero yet, but this golem does sound really promising. On days 20 to 22, I returned to the village to find that three illagers had been trying to break into the shopkeeper's house. It's a good thing I built that door. They all had crossbows, but fortunately my warp ability could take me right into close range. After that, I made short work of them with my ice frosted sword. I think I'll build a giant statue right in the middle of the village, but for that, I need to get some sheep. That way, the villagers will have something cool to look at once they're all rescued. I also added a base extension to the shopkeeper's house. I needed to give the villagers a reason to stay in the village long enough so that I can really give them all a good scare later on. I started gathering materials, breaking through a wall in the basement mine to find a huge cavern full of dazzling emeralds. Wow, these will look great on the statue, and I bet there's a lot of other great materials in here too. Next, I got some more iron to make some shears for the wool. What kind of statue do you think I'm building? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my awesome adventures. Or just search for Zozo. Spell it with me. Z-O-Z-O. -Z On days 23 to 26, I defended the base from more of the illagers sent by Crushmore. Boy, you guys are persistent. My warping power was so much stronger now that I could warp any weak mob I touched high up into the air and watch them fall to their defeat. I dropped them all, and one of them dropped a bow and some fire arrows, along with two diamonds. As if I wasn't enough of a menace to trolls already. I tried using the bow, but it didn't work. But that's what I can use the diamonds for. I need to get flame on my bow first, so I'll need to enchant it. I went to the ocean and mined some lapis lazuli stones for the enchantment process. All that was left was to gather the materials for fire enchanting. I also met a new friend while I was out near the ocean. How you doing? I'm Tuttle, the turtle. I told the turtle I needed to make an enchantment table and the turtle gave me four obsidian for it. You're such a cool dude. Why don't you come with me and live at my base? I returned to the base and enchanted the bow with a flaming enchanted book. Then I named the bow Firestarter. Now I can use those arrows with the fire enchantment. Hopefully I don't run out, otherwise I'll need to craft more and get some fire charges. I created a pond back at the base so that Tuttle could live there. Turtles love the water after all. We also love powerful defenses, Zozo. Make sure your base has got walls on every side and locks on the gates. Thanks, Tuttle, but I'm the one who is supposed to do the narration. On days 27 to 31, I decided that I wanted to explore near the ice cave again. I was out gathering materials in the mountains when I ran into Becca. Hi, Becca. Hi, Zozo. I think I found the entrance to a dungeon where the legendary golem can be found. It'll be treacherous, but we should definitely go there. I followed Becca across a slippery mountain path until we came to a giant stone bridge over a valley. On the other side of the bridge was a huge silver door. Now I've heard of knowing how to make an entrance, but this is ridiculous. What was even more ridiculous was that it was guarded by a rock. Becca was too afraid to get close to that thing, so I bravely approached the rock instead. Hey, wait a minute. How come I'm the one who has to make my friends less afraid all of a sudden? This totally wasn't what I signed up for. Oh well, maybe I can settle for scaring this bird away. Though, I still don't want to be that rude about it. Maybe I'll just ask nicely? Can we go through that door, please? Absolutely not. I've been ordered to guard this door by Crushmore himself. The rock swooped down on me, but I was able to warp out of the way and turn invisible. Where are you hiding? Right here. After some fast moves and quick thinking, I managed to win the fight. No fair. I'll remember this. Becca and I then did everything we could to open the silver door, but nothing seemed to do the trick. We tried using a lever, torches, setting it on fire, and shooting flaming arrows. Nothing worked. 
We'd have to figure something else out later. On days 32 to 35, Becca and I found a small cabin nearby where we could stay, and it turned out that a few villagers who had escaped from Crushmore were living here now. That bird must have been here to make sure nobody could go into the dungeon. And we still don't have a way to open the door. Just then, the walls of the cabin came crashing down. Or should I say, crushing down? No? Crushmore was here, and he seemed mad. Get back to the mines and find me more redstone. The villagers were scared, so I decided that I'd lure Crushmore away. Hey you, follow me! Arr. I ran as far and as fast as I could across the mountain, keeping ahead of Crushmore as best as I could. Then I saw it, a blizzard. That's the perfect place to lose him. I turned invisible and vanished into the snow, making my way back to the escaped villagers. Chill out, everyone. No pun intended. Come back to my base, and you can have your old homes back. On days 36 to 39, I made sure that all the villagers that had returned with me got bigger houses with crafting tables and anvils. Now there would be enough weapons and armor for all of them. Now if the villagers came back for them, they wouldn't go without a fight. I showed the villagers their houses, and they moved in. They seemed really grateful. I asked Tuttle if he knew anything about how we could open the silver door in the mountains. Oh, so just because I'm a turtle, that means I know everything? Well, I do know this. That silver door is only going to open for a silver key, and the only place you can find one is in the Sea King's palace. That's actually really helpful. Thanks, Tuttle. Don't mention it, Zozo. I decided to do some more work on the statue before I left the base again. What do you think of it so far? On days 40 to 43, one of the villagers noticed that I was using a bow with fire enchantments and told me of a chest deep in the woods where an enchanted book of fire aspect had been placed. The chest was guarded by a fearsome fire salamander that would burn anyone who approached, but I had to take the risk. My fire arrows were some of the best weapons I had, and I wanted to improve them even more. As I wandered through the woods, I found the salamander. I was worried if I used my frosted sword it would melt, so I switched back to my trusty old iron sword. I circled around it, using my warp abilities to jump away from its blasts of fire. It was a rough fight. I had to drink a health potion and warp away to safety many times. I also shot some arrows, but they didn't seem very effective. I warped and slashed until finally the salamander was defeated. I decided I'd upgrade my iron sword to a steel one and give it the new and improved fire enchantment. Behold, my flaming steel sword. On days 44 to 49, I crafted a wooden boat and set off for an ocean voyage. Tuttle had mentioned that the Sea King's Palace would have the silver key I would need to open the silver door, so I kept a close eye on the horizon in search of the palace. A giant squid attacked me out of nowhere, but fortunately, I was able to snipe it from a distance with my fire arrows. Fried calamari, anyone? Then I heard a voice among the waves. I can't swim! Save me! I went towards the voice and found a man with a crown who was thrashing in the water. I pulled him onto the boat so that he wouldn't be in trouble anymore. Thank you. I will reward you greatly for saving my life. I am Sea King, after all. How come you're the Sea King, but you can't swim? That's not important. What is important is that a giant bird has taken over my palace and threw me into the ocean. A giant bird? Could it be? On days 50 to 53, I sailed onward until I found the Sea King's palace. Or I guess right now it's the giant bird's palace. I left the boat at the dock and made my way inside the beautiful Lapis Lazuli Palace. The Sea King chose to remain at the shore for his own safety. I went into the throne room and saw the bird perched on the throne. You! You're the bird who is guarding the door! And you're that invisible snake who thought you defeated me! This time, I will show you no mercy! I'm not just any sneak, I'm distorted Alex! Bring it on, bird brain! I drew my fire sword and warped into battle. The rock was still as tough as ever, but it wasn't prepared to face my new enchantments. After I defeated the bird, I took a look around the palace and soon found the silver key. It was being guarded by two warriors in lapis lazuli armor. Hi, I'm Zozo. I just defeated the evil bird. Can I have your silver key? The warrior shrugged. I guess it's okay then. I left the palace only to find that the sea king was gone, along with my boat. On days 54 to 57, I made my way home on foot. On the way, I took out some chickens and grabbed the feathers to craft some arrows. And luckily, I found a bunch of iron as well. I mined it right up. I returned to my base at the village and used some of the feathers and fire charges to make some flaming arrows. I also crafted an enchanted suit of steel armor. Now I had defenses for days. Looking cool, Zozo. Thanks, Tuttle. Hey, Zozo. I'm planning on opening my shop back up, but I need a few more rare goods from the forest before I can do that. No problem, shopkeeper. I'll go get some rare materials for you in the surrounding area. You're the best. I'll be especially happy if you can find me the ingredients for shrimp fried rice. 
I first went into the forest to see if I could find some materials there, and I stumbled upon a pixie hovel. There were a ton of pixies, and they were a feisty little bunch. They flew at me and gave me some debuffs like bad luck and slowness, but what really annoyed me was that they were laughing at me. Rude. Then they started stealing my items. That's it. Enough is enough. I grabbed two empty jars that were lying on the ground and caught a couple of pixies in them. Ha! Who's laughing now? I then grabbed all the pixie dust laying around and decided I might as well take their homes. <laughs> I continued on and spotted a loose nagafang just laying on the ground. Oh, this could come in handy too. On the way to the ocean, I also grabbed some wild rice growing by the water. It was a good thing that all my time exploring the ocean let me know where to find some shrimp, so I gathered those too. I returned to the shopkeeper and gave him some of the wild rice and shrimp. He looked happier than I've ever seen him before. He took all of the ingredients and started to cook up the shrimp fried rice right in front of me. It looked like it turned out great. It must have tasted really good too, since the shopkeeper was so happy that he went inside his shop and came out with the diamond pickaxe. Is this for me? Thanks! On days 58 to 62, I was making solid progress on the base's statue when I heard the villagers start to panic. The walls of the base were being destroyed by a group of giant octopuses. It seems strange since aquatic mobs like that usually don't show up this far inland. They must have some kind of magic protecting them. Who could be behind this? I fought off the giant squids only to see the Sea King standing outside the base holding an enchanted silver spear. Sea King, are you here to help? No, Zozo. You stole my silver key, so I'm going to destroy you and your base. You don't understand. I need the silver key to open the dungeon door. I'll give it back after, I promise. Save your promises. This is war. You may have defeated those squids, but I'll be back with more and we'll end you. He ran away and I didn't want to run after him. Even if I'm doing the right thing, I'm still an outcast. And now I was at war with one of the people I wanted to help. This was messed up. Unfortunately, while I was talking with the king, some other octopuses that I must have missed set fire to the village, damaging it. Ah, come on guys. On day 63 to 66, I sailed back to the Sea King's palace in the hopes that I could speak with him and get him to agree to a truce. I didn't want any more sea creatures showing up and damaging things. I walked into the throne room, passing a bunch of scary guards. I didn't have any of my weapons equipped to show that I didn't mean him any harm. The Sea King was sitting on his throne, waiting for me. Have you come to beg for my forgiveness? Yes and no. I don't want to have a war, but I'm also asking to let me use the silver key just once. If we don't get to the golem, we'll never be able to defeat Crushmore and save the rest of the villagers. Don't you see that it's pointless? I tried the key on that door long ago, and it never opened for me. You did? The legend says that a hero must find the golem. If I'm not worthy, nobody is. What if I'm worthy? Enough talk. Let's settle this one on one. The Sea King attacked me with a spear. I had no choice but to fight back and battle the Sea King. As we fought, the guards started jumping in excitement. They must love watching a good fight. It happened so fast, but in the end, he was defeated. I guess there wouldn't be a war, but this wasn't how I wanted it to end. On days 67 to 70, I journeyed back to the silver door with the silver key in my inventory. I figured it was now or never if I was going to prove my worthiness and enter the dungeon. As I walked across the bridge, I heard a terrifying roar from underneath the bridge. It was a Remobra. The wyvern flew down in front of me and blocked my path. I am Poison Wing. You will never survive my poison. He wanted to prove that to me straight away and spat a glob of poison at me. It was too fast for me to warp out of the way. My speed was slowed and my health started to drop. I fired arrows at Poison Wing, but he kept flying around the bridge and avoiding them. At this rate, it seemed like he was just biding his time so the poison would get me. If I tried warping into melee range, I'd just end up falling and having to warp back to the bridge. Time was running out. The poison almost had me. Zozo, quick, drink this. It was Becca, and she had brought antidotes to help me overcome the poison. Nettling llama. Poison Wing bellowed, and because he was enraged, he swooped in to attack us. I stepped in front of Becca and slashed at him with my fire sword. Poison Wing was trying to get to my friend, but I would never let him through. After taking several hits, Poison Wing flew off. He was wounded, but not fatally. Poison Wing will be back and will bring others with him. Quickly, Zozo, we have to get inside that door. We ran over to the door and placed the key in the lock. To my surprise, it worked and we were able to enter the dungeon. On days 71 to 74, we traveled through the depths of the dungeon. We encountered a horde of trolls, but thanks to my enchantments, they weren't much of a threat. Take that and this. Then we came to the place where the golem was supposed to have rested. There was nothing there. 
I don't understand. Why isn't there a golem? I don't know, but Poison Wing will be back soon. We have to leave. On day 75 to 78, I repaired the parts of the base and the village that had been damaged in the war with the Sea King. I made sure everyone's home was five stories tall and had wooden bridges on the roof so the villagers could visit each other. Tuttle then came over and gave me some new, stronger materials that only the oldest turtles knew about and I was able to create my ultimate suit of armor. Then she gave me a potion. I guess they are friends with Becca and the turtle figured I might need another potion. Just in time too, because Poison Wing flew into the base from up above. Crushmore has grown tired of waiting, Zozo. Give back those villagers, or I will poison them all. He shot his poison at me, but this time I was ready. I immediately drank one of Becca's antidotes and was ready to take the fight to the Remobra himself. I warped above him, but that was a fake out. When Poison Wing dodged, I warped again, right into his path. I hit him with a powerful attack and finished him off. Wow, I've got 16 hearts, and it looks like I can warp really far now. Now that I've beaten Poison Wing, maybe I can go back to the mountain dungeon and see if I missed anything. On day 79 to 84, I searched behind the silver door again and couldn't find anything in the entire dungeon that could tell me where the golem went. So much for that. I was about to leave when I ran into a man who looked a lot like the Sea King, but older. He seemed sad, but at least it didn't look like he wanted to fight. I asked him who he was, and he told me he was the Sea King's father. Oh, I'm sorry about what happened to your son. I took off my helmet so we could talk face to face. He told me he had made this mountain dungeon when his son was little in order to test whether or not he could be a hero worthy of the legendary golem. While the Sea King had never been able to open the door, I had, which meant I was the worthy hero that the Sea King's father was hoping for. He revealed that there was no legendary golem, but he did give me the formula I could use to build it. I thanked him and we waved goodbye to each other. On days 85 to 89, I told Becca about what had happened to me at the Silver Dungeon and how I met the Sea King's father. Of course, opening that door meant that you were worthy. That makes so much sense. Still, do you think you have what it takes to build the legendary golem? I have to try, don't I? I suppose that's true. I'll give you all the information I know about what the legendary golem is supposed to be like. That way, you can't get it wrong. Thanks, Becca. On days 90 to 94, I scoured the land for all the materials that I would need to craft the legendary golem. Cobblestone walls, stairs, and blocks were easy. I already had those. But Quicksilver? I went deep in the mountains to find those and finally found a cave with some. Next, I needed to find some lapis lazuli ore, but for that, I'd need silk touch. I started asking around if any villagers knew where to get silk touch and luckily found one who did. He threw a silk touch book at me and I used it to enchant my pickaxe so I could mine entire ores of lapis. I then went back to the sea palace and snatched it from there. So far, there hadn't been anything too tough, but the block of ice dragon steel was going to be an issue. I went to Tuttle to ask him if he had any more left over, but he said no. Bummer. I asked him if there was any way he could find some more, and he said yes. Not a bummer, but it might take some time. Hmm, medium bummer. I was willing to wait though, since this could be the strongest golem ever made. Of course, I didn't want to neglect my own upgrades. With the help of the villagers, I was able to acquire some more enchanted books and give my frosted sword the powerful Freezing 3 enchantment. They told me that in order to use it, I would need to throw it and the frosted sword on top of the anvil, and the magic inside of the enchanted book would transform the sword into a better one. Well, here goes nothing. It worked! The sword leveled up to an iced dragonbone sword with sharpness 10. It even had the ability to completely freeze enemies. And best of all, it looked awesome! Now I had fire and ice on my side. On days 95 to 97, I took some time off from building the golem in order to finish the statue for the base. It was a statue of regular Alex because I wanted to show the villagers that even though I was distorted and an outcast, I was just the same as any other hero. I could feel that the villagers had already accepted me, but I hoped it was still a gesture that meant something to them. But what do you think of this statue? Do you like it? To end the day, I started building the golem. I was so close to being finished. All I was missing now was the block of ice dragon steel. On day 98, the shopkeeper's dog approached me and looked like he wanted to talk. Hey Zozo, you always say you were an outcast. How come you helped me when we first met? I guess I just needed a place to belong, and you seemed like you did too. Well, you've made a really nice place here. I can't wait for the other villagers to come back. Same. The golem is almost complete, and Crushmar will never know what hit him. I think it'll hit him, just like all of our friends should hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That's true. It sure does feel great that I can share more of my videos with all of my friends out there. Thanks for your support. On day 99, the turtle woke me up and gave me the block of ice dragon steel. 
Now I can finish the statue. The legendary golem that I built was finally complete. Even Becca was impressed. It was just like the legend. With the golem by my side, I marched over to Crushmore's redstone mines. We encountered several illagers, but the golem was able to keep them busy while I warped into the mines and freed the rest of the villagers. The most powerful of the illagers, an evoker, tried to stop me. He kept spawning vex around me and using his fang spell attack, but luckily, my superior armor protected me and I struck him down with my fire and ice weapons. The villagers were able to escape the redstone mine and run back to the base. That just left one more thing to take care of. Or should I say, crush more thing. On day 100, the golem and I started to destroy the redstone mines and I focused on breaking up the rail tracks and supporting pillars. With all the villagers now home safe, I noticed that some of the redstone piles looked weird. They were shimmering green. I shot a fire arrow at them and it ignited the redstone and blew the whole place up. That's firepower, baby. But the explosion was so huge that I was almost caught inside. I tried to warp away and the most amazing thing happened. My warp ability absorbed the explosion and converted it into pure power. As I left the destroyed mine, I saw Crushmore battling the legendary golem. You thought this hunk of junk could defeat Crushmore? I am more powerful than you could ever imagine. Using the power of the explosions that my distorted warp had consumed, I grew in size until I was the same as him with 100 hearts. That's when the giant got even bigger and meaner. I didn't even know that was possible. He smashed the golem with a single blow and started coming after me. Even legends are no match for Crushmore. Now, you will pay for ruining my plans for this world. I don't think so, Crushmore. Anything you can destroy, I can build back. I am more than a legend. I'm a hero. We battled, but I was faster. And with my ability to shoot fire out of my flaming warp, Crushmore was toast, literally. But the fight wasn't over yet. We kept battling. I used my warp, which was crazy long now, but Crushmore also had some serious strength and a huge jump height. Even if I tried to warp away to regenerate some health, he was right there with me. With the combination of ice sword, fire sword, flaming arrows, and the flaming warp did the trick. After that amazing battle, I fixed up the golem and he came back to life again. We returned to the village where Tuttle, Becca, the shopkeeper, his dog, and all the villagers were waiting for me. Even the Sea King's dad was there. He was happy to see that I was the hero the world needed. This calls for a fireworks display. I may still be able to turn invisible, but now there was no reason for me to hide anymore.